Hi, this is Joe from Prep Agent, and today I want to go over 15 things to think about when you're looking for a broker to work for. So, you've just passed your real estate salesperson test. Congratulations. Now it's time to find a broker to hang your license with. This is a business of relationships. Relationships with clients, relationships with lenders, relationships with fellow agents, relationships with inspectors, and the list could go on. But of all those relationships, your most important one could be the one with your broker. This is your business, and your success is up to you, and a good broker can be a valuable ally in helping you flourish. Make sure that you interview with many different brokerages. Unlike a traditional job environment where the employer is interviewing you to see if you're a good fit for them, you should be interviewing the brokerage. Schedule an interview with now. You do not have to wait to pass your exam. There are plenty of brokerages that will jump at the chance to talk to a potential new agent. As you look for a broker, let me give you these 15 tips. Number one, the commission split. Too many new real estate agents think choosing a broker is primarily based on commission splits. That is a horrible way to choose a broker when you are starting out. If they can help you get your business off the ground, then shoot the lock off the wallet and give them their fair cut. Remember, 100% split of nothing is nothing. A traditional brokerage model will pay a little bit more than half of the commission to the agent. Under this model, most of the overhead expenses are paid by the real estate company. There are brokers that will give you 100% commission. If a brokerage claims to pay 100% commission, it means they will collect from you in other ways, such as transaction fees, E&O premiums, desk fees, and will probably offer you zero assistance. Now keep in mind these are very general concepts. Each broker is different and everything is negotiable. However, your leverage to negotiate is not very strong when you have sold nothing. Just get going, and as you sell more, you are in a better position to negotiate your terms. Second, internet presence. This is very important these days as everybody uses the internet. When you tell someone you are working for a brokerage, they will often cross-reference you on the broker's website. That website should be presentable. A successful broker will have an attractive website, activity on social media, and well-written online reviews. Having a website that looks professional and presents each agent in a professional manner is easy to do. It is not expensive and does not take a lot of programming. Therefore, if a broker cannot do this, it is a major red flag. Check out how the agents are presented on the website. Are they presented well? Can the agent link to their personal website from the broker's website? Speaking of your personal website, you really should be building your own website that is not dependent on the brokers. Do not assume you will always be with that brokerage. In fact, the odds are that you will not. Never lose sight of the fact that this is your business. By being dependent on your broker's site, you will be limited by the capabilities of that site. Any new technologies or internet marketing advances, you will not be able to apply to the site. Also, by sending people to the broker's site, you are promoting the brokerage and all the other agents in the brokerage as you are trying to promote yourself. Your goal is to build your brand, not your broker's brand. The brokerage should be promoting the company website. The company website should be promoting the brand and its agents, not the other way around. Number three, fees. Desk fees, printer, copies, transaction fees, insurance, and more. Add it all up and see what the bottom line is per month. When you talk to a real estate broker you are interested in working with, ask them about the fees that are specific to them and the ones that are not specific to them as well. You can make a note of which fees will apply to every brokerage and which are specific to them. This will not only help you choose a broker, but will also help plan your career. Number four, the brokerage size. Before I say one word on this subject, I want to remind you that each brokerage is different and run by different people. Your primary goal is to judge the people you'll be working with, not the name on the door or the size of the office. With that being said, let me give you a very general overview of the difference between big and small brokerages. You might like the excitement and buzz of a large office, or you might be more comfortable with the cohesiveness of a smaller office. Deciding to hang your license at a large brokerage from the start is a great way to expose yourself to other experienced, successful agents. Most big real estate brokerage offices also offer training classes for new real estate agents. Working with a large brand will also give you some great name recognition that you can lean on until you build your own brand. Many national brands also will get new leads simply because they're a name which might be passed on to their agents. Just think about what you would do if you are a new buyer in town. 
the easiest thing to do would be call the office of a recognized brand and ask them if there's an agent available that could help you. That office has to distribute that lead to somebody. Why not you? The con to working at a large brokerage is that they tend to give a lot of motivational speeches using words like family, but that family tends to turn into a pack of wolves going after a tiny piece of meat very quickly when that lead comes through the door. Another con is that in a big real estate brokerage, you are being placed in a cookie cutter process that either works for you or it does not. There is little room for accommodating new ideas, circumstances, or objectives. If you are a creative, out-of-the-box thinker, this is probably not the setup for you. It is in the national brokerage's best interest to bring in as many agents as possible and see who sticks within the framework of their business plan, not to accommodate and ensure the success of each individual agent. It is more of a numbers game with them. If working for a big office doesn't seem like a good fit, you might consider joining with a local boutique brokerage. Boutique brokerages are usually much smaller offices that specialize in a specific local market. Due to smaller office, boutique offices are often a little bit more picky about who they bring into their team. It is not a numbers game for them. It is in their interest to make sure whoever they bring on is successful as they do not have the time or the resources to bring in masses of new agents. In a smaller real estate brokerage, generally you're going to be working directly with the broker and all of the experienced agents. Fewer leads will come in the door, but because there are few agents around, you'll have a better shot at those leads when they come in. If you are out of the box thinker, in a boutique brokerage, you have much more flexibility in the way of being able to discuss creative ideas to grow your business. Many boutique brokerages are going to have a tougher time organizing classroom type training which could be a turnoff to some new agents. Also, you will lack the name recognition of a big brand. Number five, facilities. When you walk into a prospective real estate office, ask yourself whether you would feel proud to bring your clients there. You will often be meeting your clients at your office before showing them properties, and you'll probably return there to complete the paperwork. Besides the aesthetics of the office, does it have adequate workspace, and would you have use of computers, copiers, or fax machines? Will you have access to the office after hours? Is parking available for agents and clients? Number six, location. You have to ask yourself how often you plan to use the office. Consider how long it would take to drive to your prospective office. Of course, modern technology gives real estate agents a high degree of mobility, so you can check emails, search for properties, and answer calls from your home or from the road. But you occasionally need to drive to your office for meetings, turn in transaction paperwork, getting foreign supplies, and checking postal mail, and of course, networking with other agents. Number seven, training. You will need to be taught how to evaluate somebody's property, list a property for sale, and put together contracts. I'm not referring to gay raw motivational speeches here. Somebody has to teach you how to fill out and explain all these forms. Companies should have a way of training their new agents. You should know something about the background of the people who will be training you and the structure in which they will be doing it. Given how fast real estate is changing with new technology and different client expectations and demands, ongoing training should be a strong consideration for any agent, regardless of tenure. If you are researching a brokerage, ask if you could sit on some training classes. Any good broker should welcome this as an opportunity to show you what they have to offer. If you have to talk to a broker and they won't let you experience their training for a moment or two, consider it a clue. If they do not have training in office, do not immediately turn them away. They may have a plan on how you could get training that is creative and unique that you may find appealing. Or they may outsource it to a trusted source so they can focus on doing deals. There are many ways to accomplish many things in this business. Always hear everybody out. Number eight, mentor program. Most new agents want somebody who has a vested interest and will be there with them every step of the way of those first few transactions. Generally, mentoring comes with a cost. It could be a per transaction charge or a percentage of the transaction. Ask to meet with who will be mentoring you. This is extremely important. This is going to be somebody that you will rely on for personal one-on-one guidance. How available will they be? What is their compensation? What is their plan for helping you? What are their expectations for their service? And more importantly, do you see yourself getting along with them? Most good mentors have a very nurturing personality. You do not want somebody teaching you who is just out for the money. Number nine, management support. Does the brokerage leadership have enough time to help new agents? In a medium or large company, your primary contact would probably be a salaried manager. 
but in a smaller company, your manager might be the broker owner. You should ask if the manager or broker also sells real estate because their personal production could have a bearing on how much time they have to help you or it may even conflict with you. Ask how many full-time and part-time agents the manager is responsible for. More than 50 full-time agents would be a very challenging workload for one manager. You may have training or a mentor, but at the end of the day, the buck stops at the broker's desk. As a new agent, you'll have a lot of questions and concerns. Getting a timely response from your broker or manager when you have a question or concern is a reasonable expectation. The best way to determine if a broker is easily accessible is to ask the agents who currently work there. Number 10, administrative support. Paperwork can be a nightmare for people getting into the business. Some people love selling. Some people love the creativity of marketing, but very few love doing paperwork. Some offices handle such chores as MLS listing uploads and transaction paperwork processing. Some brokerages have a full-time staff member whose job is to process the paperwork. Some have a staff member, but you need to pay them a fee to use them. Much like many other things, this varies from brokerage to brokerage. But if you're concerned about the paperwork, this is absolutely something you'll want to ask about. Number 11, culture. For some people, it is a matter of let me do my thing and get out of the way. For others, real estate is already a lonely business, so they want to feel like they're in a community where they can make friends, share ideas, and be part of a bigger picture. An office that is populated mostly with new agents can feel energized, but perhaps a little bit chaotic at times as well. If most of the agents are seasoned veterans, the office can feel stable, but can leave you feeling a little isolated. Some combination of experienced new agents could give you the best of both worlds. Your intuition should weigh in on your decision. While it's hard to assign a precise value to atmosphere and company culture of real estate brokerage, it is a critical factor to consider. As a real estate agent, you work independently much of the time, but you also need to work closely with your broker, office staff, and other agents. All the money in the world means nothing if you're miserable while you make it. A good company can make selling real estate a much more enjoyable process. There's no law that says you have to be miserable while trying to earn a living. What's more is that you are more likely to stick with your goal of selling real estate if you enjoy going to the office and being around people who share the same goals as you. Number 12, specialties. You might be more interested in selling residential, commercial, leasing, or property management, or some of the many other types of real estate you can work with using your real estate license. Some brokerages will allow you to work with those specialties and possibly others. Some have strict guidelines on what the office sells. Ask your prospective manager if this option would be available to you. It all depends on what your goals are. Number 13, brokerage reputation. Talk to real estate agents in your area. You can also discuss different brokers with other professionals that deal with real estate agents. These can include mortgage lenders, appraisers, home inspectors, and attorneys, amongst others. Do not just listen to if they like a certain broker or not. Make sure they give the reasoning too. Research how long agents stay with their brokers. If many agents have been working with a broker for a long period of time, it is a good sign that the broker treats their agents fairly. You can generally find this information on the broker's website or simply just by asking them. Number 14, referrals and leads. As a real estate agent, generally it's up to you to generate your business. That does not mean your brokerage will not throw you a bone once in a while. Brokerages get inquiries to their website, people call in and walk in, all without a specific agent in mind. Many brokerages have a system to generate leads to the office. You will want to know who gets those leads and how it is decided. Do they send them to a proven veteran with a good track record, or do they send them to a new agent excited to get out and utilize everything they learned? Experienced agents tend to generate their own business through lead generation past clients and referrals. Newer agents often need leads to work. Some brokerages distribute the leads internally, have relocation departments, offer floor time, and provide tools to help the agents increase their business. Some brokerages leave all that up to the individual. Remember, nothing is free. Be sure to understand the potential cost of leads provided by the brokerage. Remember to ask them about floor time. You might have the option to do floor time, which is working the front desk, hoping for walk-in clients at your office. Ask them how floor time is decided. Number 15, join a team. Many new agents will also opt in to join a team in which they will work under a successful agent. You could find people like that at either a national chain or a boutique brokerage. You would get a less of a commission split in return for some of that successful agent's business and experience that you'll get from working with them. Generally, all of the deals that a new agent does will go under the name of that team leader. 
which helps the team leader with their marketing. It is a great way for a new agent to start making some money sooner, but they'll be giving up some of their name recognition during this time, which is important to establish themselves later on. Make sure you ask potential brokers how they structure teams. Some offices are very team friendly and others are not. In conclusion, you should be able to set up meetings with a couple of brokers to see if they're a good fit. If they aren't what you are looking for, ask the broker what office they would suggest you work with. Don't be shy to ask for help or suggestions. Do not stress too much about this choice. Remember, you can always move. But in the meantime, use my tips to try and find a broker that is right for you. Good luck. Remember, this is Joe from Prep Agent.